Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hi. Welcome to the uh, February edition of Beer School. Uh, we have a very interesting topic, one I don't think we've ever had a beer school in before. So that in itself makes it kind of unique to the club. Um, but this uh, February's uh, beer school presentation this time is long time member, long time, couple years member. Art Ballou is going to talk about his building of a keyser. And he had some pictures of it on Facebook. I hope we get some really good input pictures here. It really blew me away. I built a keyser and it wasn't anything as nice as this one. So uh, a big hand for Art Ballou and uh, building a keyser. Either one. I don't I ever trust that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, uh, Chris, for that introduction. Um, well, I don't know why, but I'm always nervous doing this. You know, they say that, you know, they did a recent study and they said that people are more afraid of public speaking than dying. You know, yeah. when, you, when you go to a funeral, you'd rather be in the casket than doing the eulogy. Sounds about right. You know, so. Uh, so here we go, and I'm not going to bore you with a with a long speech. Um, I can bore you easily with a short one. So we'll. Um... All right. Well, one of the things that uh, I learned is when you search under Crazer, this is what you get. <laughs> Uh, you get Eddie Creaser, who's a B movie actor, and, and a lot of pictures of him. I go, you know. So I went to Keezer, and this is what you get on the Keezer. You will get a gazillion different versions of Keezers. No matter what style you want to make, you'll find a picture of them. It's great just for ideas. The one I built was kind of plain Jane compared to some of these. It's truly, truly amazing. Some of the possibilities. Uh, one guy built one that looked like uh, you know a treasure chest. Um, and personally, with a with a two hundred dollar freezer, I didn't want to put four hundred dollars worth of work into it and then have the freezer go bad. Uh, so I just wanted to keep it simple. But some of these are really really very nice. This is the one I put on Facebook with the handles on top, so you can steady yourself for that six or seven year. <laughs> Safety rail, very important. This guy here used tile, you know, very nice. Uh, a lot of people you start off with black uh, freezers, and you'll see a number of them where guys will put uh, their thermostats. They'll build that right into the collar, which I thought was a nice idea. So if you're, you know, it's it's like your beer platform. Guys go really crazy building their beer platforms. This is no different. So what do you need? Um, some basic knowledge, a chop saw is really helpful, get yourself a freezer, I, I would suggest if you're going to build one, get a new freezer, don't start with a freezer that's 15 years old or 10 years old, if you're going to put this much effort into it, spend a few bucks to get a new freezer. How big is your freezer? Uh, mine, holds, mine holds three kegs. I actually found a website where a guy went around with little cardboard circles, cutouts, <laughs> And put them in the bottoms of bunches of freezers. It shows you how the footprint of kegs, so you can figure out how many kegs you can fit in a freezer and have room for the tank and all the rest. That's a man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you know you don't want you can't go in there and just measure. Yeah, no, it's all about a range. You know, so I, I did that. I took the paper and I cut out circles and I went down to H. H. Greg and I'm laying them down the bottom of the freezer. I said, what are you doing? Well, so how am I seeing my kegs I can fit in here? Um, so, depending on how many kegs you want to have, I've seen Michael Earp. Do you know how many cubic feet that was? I, I really don't. I mean, you recommend the circle. Yeah, yeah, that's a, you know, you may, like, at a minimum, measure the height. Make sure that the height is plenty good and leave room for your taps, your, your the little fittings on top. Uh, but the, the, a lot of the small ones will hold three kegs. And the little hump where the motor is, that's underneath, is a great place to put your CO2 tank. With your gauges. So that works really well. I'll show you some pictures in a little bit. Um, but uh, get some good lumber for your collar. Um, 
primer paint. Like I said, a chop saw is really good, and then you'll need a tube of liquid nails. Uh, you put that on a caulk gun. The other thing I got, because I knew I probably wasn't going to have any help with this, I bought a corner clamp so that when I put my pieces of wood together, so I had to pre-drill them, I was able to clamp two pieces of wood together and hold them in place, and it was very, very helpful. All right, when you start, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the lid of the freezer. Now, these springs, the, the hinges are spring-loaded. These are, these are spring-loaded, and if you have a large freezer the way Michael Urban has, his, I'm sure his springs are substantial compared to mine. So you want to have somebody hold it down while you take the screws off. You take the screws off, remove the lid, set that aside. <laughs> Measure carefully. You only say measure twice, cut once. Very, uh, very important to do that. Let's see this. Once I got everything cut, I, I held it in place with a, with a, with a uh, corner clamp and I drilled holes in there, pilot holes, because the wood will split if you don't. So I drill it really well, then use three inch screws. Put it together. There's not going to be a lot of stress on the collar once it's in place, but you want it square. That's that's key. You want to make sure your collar is square. You get yourself a tube of uh, liquid nails, and this is let me, let me back up a minute. Once you have your collar wood cut, drill your holes. For where your caps are going to be. Set your wood on the, on the top before you put it together. See where everything is. Decide where you're going to put your caps. Some people center them. Some people off-center them. I off-centered mine, then I had a room for a, a cup and a bottle opener on the side. Um, after I got done doing the drilling, before I assembled it, I painted it with primer, and I put two coats of uh, semi-gloss latex on it. The inside of this has a lot of moisture in it, so you really want to protect the wood. You really want to seal the wood. It really helps. So paint it first. You know, and you're, you know, I'm excited. I want to get it done, but you really have to be methodical. Cut it, paint it, and then put it together. Once the collar is assembled and dry, then you lay down your bead of uh, liquid nails. Uh, it has really good holding power. I'll tell you why I know this later. A little later in the show, I will tell you why I know how well this holds. So, and there's not a lot of stress on the collar, but it holds it in place really well. So you get your collar. Once, once you, you put it down there, put the, either the lid, just lay the lid on top, or a piece of plywood with a bunch of weight. Take some kegs full of liquid of any kind, put it on top, and let it set overnight for that liquid nails to cure. If it squeezes out of the joint, wipe it with a rag. Make sure you get it wiped off when it's wet because you're just going to not be able to get it off when it's dry. You'll have to cut it off. All right, once you get, once it's cured and dried, then you can start adding your manifold, your hoses, all that kind of stuff. Put your beer taps in. Go ahead and, and get that uh, assembled. If you have to use a manifold, which I highly recommend, it makes everything organized, looks nice and neat, holds your hoses in place. Really works very well. And you, and you want to do this before you reattach the lid. Get all your stuff attached first so the lid's not in the way. So on the hump, uh, on the hump inside is where I, I set the tank down, have my gauges on there. I have two gauges. Uh, the manifold handles uh, uh, two, and two go to serving pressure, and then I have a new keg. I have a separate gauge with high pressure, so I highly pressurize one of the kegs to get it carbonated. Now, once um, all right, once you get all your fittings on, reattach your lid. I put insulation on the inside. A lot of people put insulation on the inside because the wood is okay. It's okay insulation, but it's not great. And you still have a, you still have a, a crack in the wood, which is not airtight. So get some insulation uh, like this. It's really cheap. Um, measure it. And what's, what's very important is that the lid is going to come down. Uh, 
test with this. All right. So you want to measure this little space right there because when the lid comes down, it sets down inside. So make sure you, you, you give yourself a little bit of, of, of lip there. And all you need to use is a little bit of um, silicone. Put a little bit of silicone on the wood, and the, the, the insulation is so light, it'll stick nice. There's no problem at all. And now you've got um, uh, some metal tape to, uh, to cover up the, uh, the seams. Uh, it, it's the kind of tape they use uh, in air conditioning ductwork. So it works very, very well. Put that on there. Um, I pre-drilled a hole for my thermostat. A lot of you have probe thermostats for your kegerators and such like that. And so what I did to um, keep the... Um, I've seen a few different versions of this. I took a bottle, drilled a hole in top, and I take, all, I take the probe and all the wire and stuff it down in the bottle. And this way, when you open the lid for five minutes, it doesn't very quickly kick on, uh, you know, change the thermostat. I saw some people fill these with water. Uh, I didn't like the idea because I didn't know how that would, how that probe was going to react to sitting in water for months. So I just put it in air, and it seems to work. It slows down the, uh, the thermostat from kicking on. So here's the uh, the fun part now. Uh, the, uh, the drip tray. Right? There are lots of different, like these, like I was saying, there's lots of different ways to do this. What I saw a lot of people do is, so you have your collar, it's a two by six, it's, it's two by six, what you can do with two by fours, most people I see use two by sixes. So you have your collar of two by six, and then you take a one by 12, and you bolt that on top. And then you can attach your drip tray to that wood. So some people did it that way. Um, I did not. I saw a lot of people do it like this. But I got to tell you, uh, it is it is not without danger because. So I, I, I had the freezer empty, right? I don't want to hit the freon lines. So I turned the freezer on. And I look down inside, you can see the frost building up about 12 inches, 14 inches from the bottom of the freezer. So I measure real carefully on the inside, I measure real carefully on the outside so I know where those lines are for the, 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 the cooling. Well, you know how your refrigerator at home has the coils on the back that gives off the heat? Well, the freezer doesn't have that. Those coils are underneath the metal. So I take a tiny little drill bit to drill my pilot holes to mount my drip tray. And when I did, I hear, oh, no. I hit, and it was, it was a miracle. If I were to try to have done this, it would have never happened. With a little tiny drill bit, little tiny pipe, and I hit that thing. So now, I got the collar glued on. I have all the fittings installed. I have everything installed. Everything. This is the last thing I was going to put on. And I knew there was no way to fix it. So I went down to H.H. Craig, and thankfully this freezer was new enough where I got the exact same freezer. So everything fit. So everything fit. But now I have to take the collar off that I just glued down with liquid nails. They were not liquid anymore. They had fully cured. And I took a, a flat crow bar, pry bar, and I got behind it with a mallet. And I got in behind it. And I was able to get underneath it and pry that thing off. And let me tell you, you don't have to worry about the collar moving once you've got it glued on there. Now, fortunately, I was able to get it off without destroying it. Uh, it was truly a miracle. Uh, and I was able to reattach it. So when I went to... Um, I'm a very relentless uh, individual. We'll, uh, we'll talk about the wheel base in a minute. But what, when the ref, when the freezer's running, the lid's closed, the freezer's running. You put your hand on the outside, and you can feel the heat from those heat exchange coils. Um, what I did is I actually took uh, my tin snips and I cut a whole bunch of the sheet metal off that freezer that I destroyed because I wanted to see where those tubes were. So I was buying the same thing, so let's see where the tubes are. So I got a pretty good idea where they were. They kind of ran at an angle. So when the thing is running, you put your hand on it, you can feel the heat. So I took a yellow grease pencil and I started 
writing on the freezer where these tubes were, uh, and so I was not going to do this again. So uh, I got it mounted on. Now the other thing I noticed when I took the old one to throw it away, uh, it had started to rust on the bottom and had started to rust on my nicely epoxy floor. So I built a, 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 a lot of people did this, I built, and I highly recommend it, I built a wheel base for it. In the process of serving beer, are you going to splash some beer on the floor, some of it's going to run underneath, stuff like that, and it's really nice to be able to wheel this thing out and mop underneath the floor. Um, in fact, now if I ever work on the inside, I tape the, I tape the, the tap handles down, because I hit them a couple of times and walked away. Now I hear water running and I turn around, there's a quart of beer on the floor. Uh, so yeah, it was really nasty. But anyway, um, it, it's, uh, I, had to, I had to put it on here graphically because it wasn't on it, but there's a, you put a little lip around it and that holds the freezer in place as it sits on the base. So when you when you see the base, you don't see the wheels. Um, you just want to make sure that you leave yourself um, you know, measure it carefully, uh, so that this uh, board comes up just so far, so you don't block your drain hole or any of that stuff. And <clears throat> I use stainless steel screws just to uh, kind of continue the theme of the, the stainless steel. And I, I like to say this was an original idea, the trend pieces, but I saw somebody else do it. And so I thought, you know, I ordered a little piece of diamond bright corner online and cut it up. It's just, it was just aluminum, but it, uh, it you know, give it a, you know, a nice little look. And, uh, are, 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 you buy that diamond plate already like Yeah, yeah, plate? yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you didn't use a press brake? No. No, no, no. You can, you, there's... You can buy diamond plate like any kind of size you want. There's a lot of places that have it on corners of walls and stuff. So um, it, um, it was very nice uh, putting it on there. So when it was all said and done, this is my little area. And I've been sort of slowly collecting some uh, some tins and stuff like that. At the end, uh, somebody gave me a, a gator bottle opener. I put that on there, and I got a nice uh, little stainless steel cap holder. Yes? Yeah, is it possible to magnetically attach the drip tray in? I, I, somebody told me that they, they they put it on and they put magnets on the outside to hold them in place. Um, so you could do that. You know, I think that if you don't want to drill into the body of it, risking puncturing the things, then you do that where they put wood. And there are some um, there are some drip trays that have a big stainless steel shield that can come all the way up to the taps. I saw some that actually had holes in it well, that went around the taps, and you can use the bolts of the taps to hold the thing in place. I have no idea where to get that or what it would cost, but you could, you could do that. So I would I would strongly encourage you to go on the Google and type in Keyser, not Creaser, type in Keyser, unless you like any key freezer. But if you know, type in Keyser and you'll and then hit the images where it's like images, you'll find hundreds of samples of for ideas of what to do. Are not Keyser. Not Keyser. No, no, I'm the Keyser. This is my Keyser. Uh, so it was um, it was a lot of fun building it, except for the uh, <clears throat> puncturing the tube. Otherwise, it was less so fun. fun. You did it twice. So I did it twice. Uh, so I'm like, all right. And so Expert. I'm gonna, so the other thing is, yeah. So you don't have to. If you uh, you know northernbrewer.com, great website for stuff. If they have, let's see if this actually works. Uh, they have a very nice short video. I wish I did. 
play a movie. You have to drag that over to the other screen. Hi, my name is Cody. I'm with Northern Brewer Homebrew Supply, and today Northern Brewer is going to show you how to build a keezer. So, what is a keezer? It's basically a repurposed chest freezer for serving caked beer. Building a keezer is a fairly easy process as long as you have a little bit of know how and the right tools and accessories. Before we get started, I do want to say that, like most things in home brewing, there's more than one way to do this project, and there is no cookie cutter answer. We're just going to show you one way to get it done. The whole thing begins with a chest freezer. These you can find at most appliance stores or on eBay and Craigslist, and they come in all sorts of sizes. There are three things to consider when choosing a chest freezer. First, how much space are you willing to dedicate to the keyser inside your house, basement, or living room? Second, how much beer do you plan on serving? Two kegs or 12 kegs? And third, do you want to fit your CO2 container on the inside, or will it be sitting outside of the freezer? Purchase a chest freezer accordingly. Here's a quick look at what we're about to do. Disconnect the freezer door hinges, remove the lid of the freezer, build a collar to house our tap faucets, assemble and connect gas side and liquid side tubing, reattach the hinges and lid, attach our faucet shanks and faucets, set a temperature control for our beer serving temperature, and finally, have a beer. Ready? Let's do this. Once you have the chest freezer in your work area, we want to remove the hinges. This is where our first bit of advice comes in handy. Have a partner. There are several parts of the keyser building process that are best handled with four hands if possible. This first part could be dangerous if you don't have some help. As you remove the top and bottom screws of the hinge, the spring inside will react, swinging out and possibly injuring you. Use caution. Have your building buddy hold the hinge in place as you remove the screw, then slowly ease the spring out. Repeat this process on the other hinge. Set these screws aside, as we will be using them later. Take a look at your hinges before purchasing the materials for your collar. Yeah, Depending on the hinge size, out. shape, and this placement, you thing. may need to adjust the size of You want to be able to have enough wood to cover those screws. This is the other reason why you use a 2x6 and not a 2x4. You, you, you won't have enough wood to reattach the, uh, the hinge. How do they do it in this video? Uh, I don't really know, unless, it's, unless they were smaller than they looked. Maybe Could be. I don't really remember, uh, but it's a it's a great uh, it's a great uh, video, and it really uh, it really uh, uh, it comes with subtitles. Now there's good there's good audio to it and this and that. So if you really like to watch a movie doing it, it's uh, it's not that long. Does it show? Does it say how long it is? Fourteen minutes. Yeah, it's fourteen minutes. Let's kill it. But hey, wait, wait, wait. That's a very important, once you get this thing cut, take the lid off and lay that thing on it. This is before you attach the screw, before you do anything. Once you get your wood cut, lay it all down, pre-drill your holes, do all that stuff. But at this point, this is where I seal the wood and I painted it twice, and then I, and then I put it together. Um, so I want to make sure I put paint on the inside of those holes and do whatever I could to seal the wood. So it doesn't take a lot of tools to do it, you know, a chop saw, a drill, some spade bits, that's about it. You don't really need a lot of stuff. Thanks. Uh, I will post the, these notes online for those of you who have trouble sleeping at night. Those things will be online. Um, are there any questions? I got one, Art. Yes, sir. Other than doing it twice, Roughly how many hours did you have into the project? Including like painting and sanding? Yeah, it, uh, it was from the actual physical labor part, it didn't take very long at all. I mean, what you do, you get the wood home, you cut the wood off, and you didn't need a lot of wood. You know, it doesn't need a couple of boards, really. You didn't need a lot of wood at all. One, eight foot, two by four. Yeah, something like that. I had a couple of two by fours, and you just measure carefully, you get the most out of each piece of wood. You cut the wood. You drill some holes, put them on top, measure it, paint it. This is the hard part. You got to paint it and wait. Paint it again and wait. Paint it again and wait. And once that was done, I clamp it, drill the holes, put the screws in, four corners, put it on top of the freezer. It's done. Okay, great. 
Now I can glue it down. Put I'll put a piece of plywood on top and then some sandbags I happen to have and a keg full of spear on top. And then again, more weighting. I have to wait overnight. So once that's done, that's just at that point you can literally just hook your, your beer caps up, put your beer in there, and you're done. Now, if you want to put a manifold on and insulation, then that's a little more work. But none of the stuff is really labor intensive. It's not like it's technical or really hard. Yeah. Would it be advisable to put like a rubber seal in on the so, top? Yeah, some people do. Some people do that. Um, well, the standard seal from the lid is still sealed. It's still, yeah, yeah, but the bottom and the top on the freezer would normally have one. So if you put one on the top of the wood, it would top of the bottom. Well, I don't know. The freezer is actually, just actually the plastic. freezer, the, the top edge of the freezer is just plastic. Oh, it is? Yeah, it does not have, it's your, like your refrigerator door. If you open your refrigerator door, there's only one, only the door has the seal. Okay. So, uh, but some guys, um, you know, you can get as fancy with this as you want. Some guys put a little fascia plate that cover the that cover the, um, the insulation, so when you open it, all you saw was a nice wood finish. One guy used bird's eye maple veneer on it. For the inside? No, for the outside decoration. This is just, you know, beautiful stuff, but like I said, I didn't want to put $400 worth of material into a $200 freezer. You know, so um, it, uh, it, you know, a, lot of, a lot of us in this room are creative people. Tell by the guys who build their own towers and come up with their own recipes. So we're all like be a little creative. It is a great vehicle for just that. And I think it's I think it's much better than kegger. Uh, unless you don't have the footprint for, for a chest freezer. I think this is very nice. But with the, the kegerator, you've got a freezer up above that you're really not utilizing. Um, it's almost wasted space, I think. They are just in round numbers. What should a do yourself a budget for something like that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, round. Are you talking about the? Uh, are you talking about the taps as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, arts and parts. Okay. The most expensive thing in this whole thing are the actual taps. Now, yeah. uh, places For, like. Forward sealer? Did you get the? What's that? Did you get Perlix or? Did no, I got, you know, Hearts actually has a whole little um, uh, kit where you get that, a little screw handle, and all the little hardware, and I think they were $40? Something like that. It's about $40, $50 a tap. And so you get $150, I would say probably $250. For hardware? For hardware, and that's that's kind of a high end. It's hoses, clamps. Yeah, yeah. Now that doesn't include your CO2 tank. I'm assuming you already have kegs in the CO2 tank. Because uh, obviously the kegs are not cheap. You've got a CO2 tank and gauges and all the rest. But if you have that and you're just having them inside, if you already have that and you have it inside a chest with picnic taps, which is what I had. Here's the thing. The reason why I did this is because I had the picnic taps on there and invariably there would be spillage inside the freezer. So after about two months, I had a bunch of nasty beer on the bottom of my freezer and I'd have to fill it with water and wash it out through the drain hole and all that kind of stuff. So now my freezer stays clean. And um, now the next thing I'm gonna do is put a block and tackle above it so I can just hoist up the keg and then roll the freezer out and then lower the full keg down into the thing. You need a trolley. Well, we were talking about, Ed and I, my, my group, we were talking about getting the little I-beam, you know, with the little shipyard thing on there and get the little motor. And so we just kind of go from one to the other. Yeah, you know me, I like pulleys. Yeah. So do you pour a lot of foam on the first beer because of that, that uh, outside faucet is warm? No, no, not at all. Yeah? No, I mean, everything's cold. The very, just the very, very end of it is outside. Yeah, and that, that's, I mean, yeah, like six foot of hose, beer hose? All the hose is down inside the keys. So each, Everything is chilled. Each keg has six foot of hose? I don't put six foot of hose on it, no. It's, it's not that long. But I, I really control the pressure on it. I'm only giving it about three pounds of pressure. So when I put the tap on, the pressure's not real strong. 
And uh, I just all of just set the glass on the drip tray and let it fill a little foam like that. When it's a new keg, it'll be more pressure, so it will cough. Talk to some other people with keezers, or they said that the first pour is usually a lot of foam, and then after that, it's it's uh, liquid because the outside uh, the faucet is hot and it has to cool down to pour the beer. Well, no, I haven't had my keezer that long, so I've not gone through the August garage scenario yet. So right now, it's uh, not really a problem. So, JR. So am I correct in assuming that if I buy a freezer for 100 bucks and then I have 250 dollars hardware, I'm in? You're in. Or is there more? No, it's because think about it. The most expensive thing you've got are your taps. You know, hoses are cheap. If you got your gauge and you got a tank and you, know, you got your tank, you're good. So there's really you got lumber, some screws, the taps. And that's really about it. You got the, the insulation is nothing. Paint. I use paint I already had. You know, surely you got some paint you like to get rid of. You know. So this is a project for a, a beer gig that's under five hundred bucks. Easily under five hundred bucks. Oh man, you, you'd have to do one of those exotic ones you, we showed you pictures of earlier. You need to get really exotic with it. And, and believe me, you'll, you'll see some. Yeah. Where do you put the CO2 and does it really matter? Where do I put the what? CO2 cylinder. Inside, when you look inside, the, 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 all these chest freezers inside, there's a little hump under which is the compressor or the condenser. Or so all of them will have a little hump inside, which is the other thing you want to do. Some of them have just a little rounded corner, which is not very good. Some of it's like a little shell, which is what you want. It will accommodate your CO2 tank very well. <clears throat> what was the question again? Is it important where you put the CO2 tank? Uh, yeah, there's going to be a hump in there, and this is the other thing you want to do. You want to measure how tall your CO2 tank is with the gauges on it. Measure that. How tall that is. Some of you guys have these really big CO2 tanks. Okay? And they may not, they may be too tall to fit on the hump. I don't. I have a smaller tank. And with the gauge on it, it has plenty of clearance to sit on sit on that. So if you have a small CO2 tank, it'll sit very nicely on these little humps inside the freezer. If you have a large tank, you're gonna have to treat that like a, a keg and set that inside on the body and not on the hump. So you'll have to get maybe a little bit big, bigger um, freezer to accommodate it. I would not advise you keeping the gas outside. I saw some people put the gas outside the keezer, which doesn't make any sense because you have hot gas going into the cold beer. It doesn't make sense. So. Right, you're much better off. Anything else? All right, guys, thank you very much. Back over to a man who needs no introduction. What he needs is a conclusion. Great, thank you so much, Art. Really appreciate that. Uh, another round of applause for Art. I lost the presentation. And uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and take a little bit of a break and then we'll uh, move into the general meeting. Just a few. So uh, grab yourself a drink, and if you have any questions you want to ask Art, please definitely, if you want to have to go ahead and address them. Thank you.